for insight into how Canadian banks are posi positioning themselves for 2012. We are joined by John Armstrong, who is the managing partner at Capco, which is a global financial consultancy firm. John, thank you very much for being with us this morning. There's certainly so much concern regarding the European banks and the bad debt, bad assets that they have. How, in fact, are the Canadian banks shaping up, and what's their number one concern for 2012? Well, first of all, Catherine, it's great to be here. Thanks for, uh, for having me. I think, um, you know, when we chat with the banks, uh, I think they're coming off a great year in 2011. You know, the net income of the, of the big five banks, about $24 billion, up about 20% from 2010. So really a very good year and very good fourth quarter, uh, somewhat surprisingly. I think the real challenge now that they face is, you know, how do we keep up that profitable growth? And if you look at, you know, as you say, there's some, some factors around the kind of macroeconomic environment that are a little bit scary for the banks. But also, you know, if you look at the domestic market and you see you know, one of the big drivers of growth over the last 10 years or so has been the Canadian consumer. And so, you know, they've, they've run up debt. And now, as Governor Carney likes to point out, you know, it's really at an unsustainable uh, level. At least it can't get any bigger. Mm -hmm. so, so that driver of uh, domestic growth is largely played out. So now the question is, okay, what do we do? Where do we find uh, growth? How much of a danger is that for Canadian banks? The fact that Canadians are carrying somewhat more debt than they were in the past. They're carrying quite a lot of debt. Yep. And, you know, they, they borrowed it from the banks. Uh, how much danger is that for the financial institutions? You know, I don't think it's a huge danger. I mean, a lot of this has been in the form of, you know, the mortgage market, which, as you know, is, is uh, you know, the, the, the losses that the banks sustain and uh, mortgages in Canada, you know, are, are, you know, one or two basis points. Yeah. I mean, it's almost nothing. Uh, so they're, they're largely insured. So it's less, it's less of an issue around, you know, lots of defaults, but it's more of an issue around, you know, there's, there's, there's no more that they can uh, extend themselves. And so you've got to find growth in other, uh, you know, in other areas, both domestically and internationally. Well, and John, that, that brings up an interesting point because, um, you know, looking for growth can be termed almost as a good problem to have. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, obviously they have to get the right acquisition targets and execute. So from that perspective, do you think that they're looking around the globe right now and finding some attractive assets? I mean, we've seen a little bit of that. What about right now? Yeah, I mean, I think the last uh, 14 months or so, they've yeah. been very active. Uh, and, and, you know, as you look at each of the banks, they're employing different strategies, you know. So some of the banks, uh, TD, BMO, are really saying, you know, the, the U.S. retail market is where we want to bulk up, and they're doing that. You've got other banks uh, like Scotia, obviously, continuing on their acquisitions in Latin America and Asia Pacific. So you see different strategies. I think the, the good thing for the banks in Canada now is, as you see the European banks in trouble, uh, and you see the latest stress test says that you know, they need to raise 115 billion euros you know, mm -hmm. kind of immediately, and how are they going to do that? It's not a great market to issue equity. Uh, so I think they're all looking at shedding assets. And, uh, and so I think it's, it's kind of an opportune time because you've got banks that are looking to divest. And then you've got the Canadian banks with, uh, you know, well capitalized and have the ability now to uh, to do some acquisitions yeah, strategically. Do you, do you think the Canadian banks, several Canadian banks, will be willing to make major overseas investments in the next year or so? Because as you say, the opportunity is there. We've yeah. been talking about it a lot. We had guests on yesterday talking about it, and I sort of wonder if what's they're the if, if they're going to jump. What's the appetite? Yeah, exactly. What's I, I, their appetite to take on some more risk and and, and some more business? I, I think. Of I mean, they've they've been pretty judicious. Uh, so I don't think anybody's, you know, taken on something that could, uh, you know, really put them in trouble. But, you know, these European banks, it's not necessarily that you're even having to invest in Europe. The European banks have assets all over the world that they're looking to divest. So I think the banks in Canada, you know, ha have the ability to say, okay, you know, you've got a, a bank in Europe that maybe wants to get rid of a division somewhere. Uh, and so they'll, they'll look at that. So I think they, I, I don't think they'll do massive acquisitions, but I think, you know, strategic uh, acquisitions that infill in areas that they're looking to grow. I think you'll see that for sure. Again, when we look at the Canadian banks or banks, uh, you know, in North America in general, uh, with respect to the capital markets, trading volumes, um, some balance sheets. I mean, what are some of the con those are, you know, depending on the bank, those are some of the concerns. Um, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? In terms of concerns, concerns, yeah. Well, again, I think uh, you know, profitable growth is probably the biggest, the biggest one. Uh, I think on the, uh, if you look at the domestic retail banking market. Uh, and you look at cost structures, uh, and, and you compare that to best practices around the world, I think our Canadian banks have a, a fair ways to go in terms of getting their cost structures, uh, you know, in, into that kind of best practice category. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at the, uh, the banks now on average in Canada, and, the retail, and you really have to look at the retail banking market, you know, that's the best place to kind of compare apples to apples uh, around the world. And our, our banks would be on average, you know, in the kind of 48%, 49% expense ratios. And if you look at best practice banks, so a Westpac or a Santander, uh, they're at about 42%. And so if you say this is a $40 billion uh, 
uh, business in Canada, you know, and take, say, even 5% of that, you know, there's a couple of billion dollars mm -hmm. of excess costs that, uh, that I would argue have to come out. Or, or you find growth, you know, that's another way to get your expense ratios down. But going back to the initial point, you know, that's going to be hard to do. So I think, you know, taking costs out of the system, I think, is another priority for them. Where, where are the opportunities for growth for Canadian banks within Canada? You know, once upon a time, they weren't so strong in investment banking, but they basically took over right, that business. Right. Once upon a time, they weren't really big players in wealth management. They're very big players in wealth management now. Insurance, uh, there's some walls that prevent them to get from getting into some areas. Where, where can they actually grow? Because they're all they're very big presences in the Canadian economy, and they're, they're dominant right now. They, they are, that's right. And I think you, you mentioned wealth management. I do think that's one that is a focus. Uh, for all the banks, you know, some have been a little late to the party and are, are now, you know, doing some acquisitions to kind of grow that business. But I think, uh, you know, as the banks look and you look at the favorable demographics, uh, that is an area that uh, I think they're uh, looking to grow and then some looking to grow, you know, more broadly globally in that, uh, in that space. So I'd say wealth is one. Insurance you mentioned, uh, I think that's another area of uh, potential growth. You know, you've got a huge retail customer base and many of them are underinsured. Uh, in terms of life insurance, and so I think that's an opportunity for them to, uh, uh, to to grow the business. And John, before we let you go, I do want to get your thoughts on the exchanges. I mean, you you do work with exchanges. Yes, we There's do, been yeah. a consolidation. What what are you what are you thinking here? Should there be more con consolidation? Well, it's interesting. 2011 has been interesting. There was 30 billion dollars of acquisitions announced, and pretty much that many that were closed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a it's an interesting market. It's very political. You've got lots of regulatory scrutiny. Uh, I think there's certainly a desire on the part of the exchanges to continue to consolidate, but uh, as we've seen, you know, we've got Maple, which is, you know, up in the air uh, from, a, you know, the Competition uh, Bureau. You see, uh, you know, the uh, Deutsche Bourse, New York, yeah. uh, that's still, uh, you know, in limbo. You had the Australians, Nick's, the uh, Singapore uh, deal. So it's, uh, it's, it's challenging, I think. Uh, there's, as I say, there's a, a desire to do it, but right. uh, sometimes the, uh, the regulators uh, make it challenging. Do you think we're going to see more attempts to put together? Uh, I think so, deals? yeah. I think, yeah. I think they're kind of feeling their way. Uh, I think the, uh, the, you know, the, the, uh, the Deutsche Bourse, um, New York, Euronext, you know, I think if they spin off the derivative, some of the derivatives business, you know, that probably mm -hmm. is going to go through. I don't know what to say on Maple where that's going to turn out, <laughs> but... Uh, John, but one of the arguments, just real brief, is, is um, that they need to consolidate in order to compete on a global scale. Do you agree with that? Well, there's big scale economies in the business. Mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, that's absolutely right. You know, and some of them are driven by geographic expansion. Uh, but I think, you know, as, as you look at it, I think there are some uh, economies to be had, which would be one of the arguments. Uh, you know, that would be an argument for Maple uh, to make as well, right? There's efficiencies to be had that, uh, you know, that should, uh, uh, you know, mitigate in favor of it. So. Okay. John, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Very interesting. Great. Great. Thanks very thank much. Thank you. And that John, was John Armstrong, who's the managing partner at Capco. And